ICBM is a guided ballistic missile with a minimum range of 5,500 kilometers primarily designed for nuclear weapons delivery. Similarly, conventional, chemical, and biological weapons can also be delivered with varying effectiveness, but have never been deployed on ICBMs. Most modern designs support multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, allowing a single missile to carry several warheads, each of which can strike a different target. Early ICBMs had limited precision, which made them suitable for use only against the largest targets, such as cities. They were seen as a safe basing option, one that would keep the deterrent force close to home where it would be difficult to attack. Attacks against military targets still demanded the use of a more precise manned bomber. Second and third generation designs dramatically improved accuracy to the point where even the smallest point targets can be successfully attacked. ICBMs are differentiated by having greater range and speed than other ballistic missiles, intermediate range ballistic missiles, medium range ballistic missiles, short range ballistic missiles, and tactical ballistic missiles. Short and medium range ballistic missiles are known collectively as theater ballistic missiles. Currently the US, Russia, China, France, India and Israel have developed anti-ballistic missile systems. Russia is building the largest ICBM ever. Russian ICBMs such as the Urs, Topol M and the beloved the Sarmat is being designed specifically to overcome ballistic missile defenses. United States needs a new missile to maintain its deterrence against Russia and China. DOD's Active Denial Technology and Future Solid State Active Denial Technology System will produce a focused beam of directed energy to provide our troops a non-lethal option to stop, deter, and turn back suspicious individuals with minimal risk of injury. Active Denial Technology is designed to protect the innocent, minimize fatalities, and limit collateral damage across the range of military operations. Active Denial Technology uses radio frequency millimeter waves at a frequency of 95 gigahertz. Traveling at the speed of light, the millimeter wave directed energy engages the subject, penetrating the skin to a depth of only about 1 64th of an inch. The beam produces an intolerable heating sensation, compelling the targeted individual to instinctively move. For the military, active denial technology can be used for both force application and force protection missions. Applications include crowd control, perimeter security, patrol and convoy protection, and other defensive and offensive operations from both fixed site or mobile platforms. While the Active Denial System Advanced Concept Technology Demonstration succeeded in demonstrating a large-scale version of Active Denial Technology, a smaller scale, more mobile version is being developed by the U.S. Army and the DOD's Non-Lethal Weapons Program, utilizing solid-state technology. This system will demonstrate and prove out the critical technologies for a follow-on tactical system which will be an adjunct system that can be installed on a range of tactical or support vehicles. It will have an azimuth drive for full 360 degree coverage, E-steering and azimuth for fine steering control, and full E-steering and elevation. With an invisible beam, speed of light targeting, and silent operation, it can be used in a wide range of operations, such as enhanced combat mobility in dense urban areas where it quickly and safely moves civilians obstructing vehicle mobility. 
or it can be used to safely deter unarmed but suspicious civilians observing U.S. forces. At entry control points, it provides an additional layer of response for dealing with potentially threatening targets and potential crowd violence. It can be quickly de-escalated by targeting the leader or, if necessary, by panning across the entire crowd while armed individuals mixed in a crowd can be engaged without risk to surrounding civilians. Since the beam can penetrate window glass, it can also be used for non-lethal engagement of suspicious vehicles potentially threatening U.S. forces. The SS-80T will be a lightweight, non-kinetic, non-lethal anti-personnel system providing an alternative to lethal force. High Energy Lasers your first mission? Provide 24-7 air defense of a forward operating base. The situation, constant threat of surprise mortar or rocket attacks by insurgents in the region. Your means, an Erlikon Skyshield Moto C-RAM Camp Protection System with added laser effectors. With very few alterations, Rheinmetall Defense can convert its fielded C-RAM revolver guns into laser effectors that seamlessly integrate into the existing camp protection system. These new laser effectors are highly effective versus RAM and LSS targets and are very economical in terms of logistic costs. Attack. Insurgents have launched mortars against your camp. The Sky Shield sensor units detect the targets, track and assess them, guide the laser effectors to the most threatening one. The laser beams of several high energy lasers are superimposed onto the target, heating it up to a point where it detonates mid air. Rheinmetall demonstrated the C-RAM capability of its laser system in front of an international audience during two live firing events in October 2013. A pressurized mortar launcher was used to fire 82 millimeter steel spheres filled with explosives. Our lasers destroyed 9 out of 10 RAM targets mid-air at a distance of roughly 1100 meters. Mission accomplished. Your second mission. Secure the lower airspace during an international sports event. The situation. Possible terror attacks with the objective to create mass panic inside the sport arena. Your means. A surveillance and fire control radar system connected to a number of high-energy laser effectors and conventional revolver guns. All systems are hidden or obscured from view. Our high-energy laser effectors are both inconspicuous as well as dead accurate and can be deployed discreetly. Attack. A remote-controlled multicopter approaches the arena. Deployable even in dense urban settings, modern LSS aerial vehicles are extremely maneuverable and use GPS to follow pre-programmed waypoint patterns. They can be obtained cheaply, also by misguided groups or individuals, and are capable of transporting payloads exceeding 2 kilograms. In our case, an explosive charge has been attached to the multicopter with the intention to detonate it in the stadium and cause mass panic. The radar surveillance system detects the unmanned aerial vehicle and tracks it. Rheinmetall's high energy laser effectors are ready. As a first measure of de-escalation, 
The laser effectors dazzle the onboard camera of the multicopter. If this doesn't stop the attackers, the unmanned aerial vehicle will have to be destroyed immediately. Unnoticed by anybody in the arena, the laser effectors just quietly fulfilled their duty. During the live firing events of 2013, Rheinmetall Defense successfully dazzled a live camera on board a GPS-guided octocopter. The international audience then witnessed the mid-air destruction of the attacker from a remote position. Mission accomplished. Your last mission, protect an international port of vital economic importance against aerial attacks. Situation, the opposing forces saturate the airspace with waves of cruise missiles. Your means, a complete GBAD task force with added laser effectors. The Rheinmetall beam superimposing technology allows the beams of multiple lasers to be constantly adjusted, focused, and overlaying each other on a target to be multiplied indefinitely. This is key for swiftly destroying a multitude of targets with pinpoint precision. During a live demonstration in 2012, Rheinmetall verified their scalable laser energy approach by cutting through a 15 millimeter steel girdle at a distance of 1,000 meters by superimposing the beams of five 10 kilowatt lasers. Attack. Three cruise missiles are heading for the vital asset you're protecting. The fire control unit identifies and tracks the intruders. The laser effectors are pointed to the most threatening attacker and proceed to eliminate one target after the other. Last-ditch defense against leakers is provided by 35mm ahead. In October 2013, Rheinmetall proved to an international audience its ability to deter a saturation attack of three jet-powered UAVs approaching at 20-second intervals. All three were successfully destroyed mid-air. All three UAVs were taken out of the air at distances of 1,000 to 1,200 meters. Mission accomplished. Laser effectors will not replace traditional GBAT effectors like guns or missiles. They will rather complement them especially against LSS targets and in moto situations. Low logistical cost, combined with all its other advantages, will help laser technology to become established as an effector against aerial and other threats. By calling upon the synergies of cross-division expertise, Rheinmetall was able to substantiate the technical feasibility of its high-energy laser prototypes during endless internal trials, a fully operational high-energy laser effector system can be developed within the next decade. Soon, our high-energy laser effectors could close the short-range gaps in your existing g band There's your...
two minute block instructions.
The U.S. Army would develop next-generation replacements for its armored vehicles such as the M1A2 Abrams main battle tank and the Bradley fighting vehicle, but the service simply does not have the money for such projects. Instead, the Army is incrementally improving its venerable armored combat vehicles to keep them relevant against a rapidly modernizing threat, the Russian Armada family of combat vehicles for example. The Army does have some concepts that it is developing for next-generation combat vehicles, and the service might build prototypes, but there are no plans to bring any such machines into production. I'd love to have replacement programs today for Abrams and Bradley and lay in plans to go do that, Major General David Bassett, the U.S. Army's Program Executive Officer for Ground Combat Systems told reporters the Association of the United States Army annual meeting in Washington on 4 October. But it doesn't fit in this portfolio in this budget environment. The Army knows the limitations of both the Abrams and the Bradley, and has a good idea where there are opportunities available for incremental modernization, Bassett said. There is room for growth, and Bassett pointed out that both vehicles have little in common with the original variants that first rolled off the production line in the early 1980s. Nonetheless, Bassett acknowledged there are limits to how many more upgrades can be made to the venerable armored vehicles. The question for the Army is which technologies can be integrated into the existing platforms and which technologies will require a completely new vehicle, Bassett said. Indeed, sometimes the Army has found that making incremental upgrades to multiple vehicle types is better than developing a single replacement for one type of vehicle. Such was the case with the Army's now defunct ground combat vehicle replacement for the Bradley. The service realized greater capability by scrapping that program and using the money to update its Abrams, Bradley's and Paladin's self-propelled guns, Bassett said. At the end of the day, a combat vehicle is about a box and mobility system, lethality system and communications and other things, Bassett said. If you can take all those things and put them on an existing vehicle, then maybe you don't have to have a whole new vehicle built from scratch and the risk associated with that kind of development. The Armored Multipurpose Fighting Vehicle AMPV, program is an example where a new vehicle was developed by using components from an existing machine. The AMPV uses a new hull, but most of the vehicle's innards are sourced from the Bradley, Bassett said. However, there are limits. For example the powertrain on a Bradley, there is room only for a certain sized engine. If we are aware and bring in a new improved powertrain, that just adds risk on top of that, Bassett said. So we've been doing this to build new capabilities in an incremental way over time. It's also what our budget supports. But even incremental development and improvement will mean that both the M1A2 SEP 3 and the Bradley will remain potent machines. For example, the Army is currently working on developing new features such as the Modular Active Protection Systems MAPS, which will help improve both machines' defenses against incoming missiles. Whether the Army's incremental approach will be sufficient to keep pace with Russian and Chinese developments is yet to be seen, but in the current budgetary environment, it's the best the Army can do.
My name is Captain Joseph Thomas. I'm a 19 Alpha Armor Officer. I'm the company commander for Bravo Company 112 Cav, Grey Wolf Brigade. Today we're uh, qualifying table six on the uh, M1A2 Abrams Set V2. This is the culminating point for the crew. This is their crew qualification. They've conducted a table three with the crew, which is a dry exercise of the table six. Conducted a table five, which is an opportunity for them to shoot and test their systems. This is just a stepping stone for the rest of the qualifications that the soldiers will achieve. Table nine being the section, table 12 being the platoon, and then eventually we'll execute the company CalFex, which is the company qualification that we're all looking forward to. I couldn't be more proud of my soldiers in the way they're performing. We've got pretty good throughput so far, and uh, the scores are coming back, and they're doing really, really well. These guys are setting themselves up to be superior uh, crewmen and, and distinguished crewmen.